You want to learn how to make cream and mushroom soup using a classic French mother sauce? Follow along. Chef Chris Holland with Chef Out of Water. Welcome back to the next episode of Cooking at Home During a Global Pandemic. In the previous episode, we talked about bechamel, bechamel being one of five mother sauces. In this episode, we're going to talk about another mother sauce, velouté. A velouté is basically a chicken stock thickened with a roux, a roux being equal parts butter and flour. When cooked together, you add the stock, it will thicken the soup. But that is the gist of it. To make a classic velouté, you would need equal parts butter and flour, it's chicken stock, but you would also use a creme fraiche and a couple of egg yolks and this and that. Well, we're gonna cut a couple of corners, just wanna understand the concept. So today, we're gonna make cream of mushroom soup using the concept of a classic velouté sauce. For this recipe, you're gonna need the following. I have six ounces of butter. So for you at home, that is a stick and a half. All right. I have four ounces of flour. This is a quarter cup. All right. Mushrooms. This is about 20 mushrooms. I've sliced them all up. These are a uh, cremini mushroom, but you're welcome to use button mushroom, a wild mushroom, um, any kind of mushroom that you like. Really. All right. We have a half an onion, and that has been uh, really finely diced. Six cloves of garlic and we have a little bit of dill. I've chopped some up and I've left some for garnish. Also gonna be added into is about a teaspoon of paprika, and then of course we're gonna season with Chef Daddy salt. It's the savory blend. All right, so get all your ingredients together and we'll be right back with you. Hi, I'm Chris Holland, founder of Chef Daddy Brand Seasoning Salts. Our research proves that Chef Daddy will improve your quality of life. It'll make your dinner taste like it was cooked by James Beard himself. Chef Daddy will bring romance back to the kitchen. It'll make you a better juggler. Cooking with Chef Daddy will make you a better homeschool teacher. <laughs> Chef Daddy can make you an Iron Chef winner. You can use it to play cornhole. Chef Daddy's like a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Chef Daddy, enhancing life's flavor. All right, before we get started, let's discuss chicken stock. I had someone request uh, through our Facebook page, and by the way, if you're not following, you want to follow us on Chef Out of Water on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. At any rate, that's where you want to find us. Now, let's talk about chicken stock. Here's what you need to make a proper chicken stock. Let's do a little bit of math here. For a proper chicken stock, hypothetically, you would need four pounds of bones, all right? Four pounds of bones. You would need twice the amount by weight of water, or being eight pounds of water. Now, eight pounds of water, let's break that down for you. A pint, as we know, is a pound, all right? So if we took a pint times eight, we'd have 128 ounces, or four quarts, or one gallon of water, all right? Boom. Also, in this, you would need to have half the amount by weight of bones of mirepoix, all right? Mirepoix, so that would be two pounds of mirepoix, all right? We talked about this before. Now, mirepoix consists of half onions, so one pound of onions, and half being equal parts carrots and celery. So you would need half pound of carrots and a half pound of celery, equaling a total of two pounds. Now, with that, let's talk about this for a minute. What you wanna do is you can just put your chicken bones in a pot, you cover them with the water, and you throw your vegetables in. That's a totally uh, acceptable way to do this. You could also take it to a next level by doing a roasted chicken stock, where you could then roast all the bones, get a little uh, color on them, roast the vegetables, and then throw those in a pot with the water 
etc., and carry on from there. All right, you choose, make this your own. I'm just giving you the concept now. With this, you would need what's known as a bouquet garni. Okay, garni, it, it is consisting of five things. All right, so you need some fresh thyme. Okay, you need parsley stems. Okay, and you need some garlic, peppercorns, and bay leaf, all right? You can, traditionally you might put those in a little bit of a, um, a cheesecloth bag tied to a string, drop it in there almost like a bag of tea, if you will. But in this case, feel free, just chuck it all in there, all right? So, with the stock, bring it up to just below a boil, all right? Not quite a simmer, you just want kind of smiling on the top. You can see wisps of steam coming off, um, etc. but it's not simmering away uh, too heavily. Leave that, set it on your stove, and leave it for six to eight hours. And when it is finished, you'll have a wonderful, flavorful chicken stock. Now, the best way to handle this, strain it out, put it in containers in your cooler, and just let it set. All the fat will rise to the top, at which point you can just take it right off the top, and you have a nice, clear stock. If you let it boil too much, it will be cloudy, and it won't be as pure. All right, so that's the gist of chicken stock, and uh, we're going to use that and get into our mushroom soup. So let's start cooking. What you're gonna need here is you're gonna take and go ahead and put on one quart of chicken stock. Now, yes, you might have made it yourself, but one quart being a, a pretty, uh, pretty common size that you might find in a grocery store of a pre-made chicken stock. All right, go ahead and put that on a burner. You wanna heat that up to maybe uh, about 120, 130 degrees, just above warm, all right? Get that a little hot. In a second pot, you're gonna add your butter into the pan. Go ahead and grab a spoon here. You do want to stir this a bit. Your butter, it has a high fat content, so it has a tendency to burn. So you want to keep an eye on that. Don't let it burn. Keep stirring it, all right? Now, with this concept of velouté, we're going to make it a little bit backwards. We're going to add our melted butter. Then we're going to add our onions, our garlic, and our mushrooms, and we're going to kind of cook those down a little bit, okay? Not too terribly much, but cook them down a little bit. Then we're going to add our flour to that mixture. Then we'll have a mushroom roux. So what happens is the flavor of those mushrooms attach to the fat molecules of the butter, making a mushroom butter. Therefore, it will be more intense in flavor and be more mushroomy. It's fully melted. It's bubbling away a little bit. And like I said, don't let it get too hot and keep stirring. Into that pot, you're going to add your onions. Okay. We're just going to start to cook these onions until they become a bit translucent. Okay, <clears throat> into the pot, we're going to go ahead and add our chopped garlic. Again, this is six cloves of garlic. Okay. What we're doing here is building flavor, all right? So we're starting with whole butter, then we're going to add the onion, then we're going to add the garlic, and to that we'll add the mushrooms. Now, this is about 20 button mushrooms. We're going to just use about a third of that, maybe a fistful, all right? In a traditional velouté, it would be somewhat equal parts butter and flour. Now, we have increased the butter because mushrooms are like a sponge. They're going to soak up a, a little bit of that uh, a little bit of that butter, and then we wouldn't have enough left to cook our flour uh, thoroughly into the mixture. Our stock is heated up over here. I went ahead and turned it off. What will happen is if you add a boiling stock to our butter flour roux mixture, it will, uh, it will not work out. It will create roux balls throughout your soup and it won't thicken properly. Okay, so just have it warm and then we'll add it to our hot roux. So we've cooked that together. What's happening is the flavor from the mushrooms is attaching to the fat and the butter. All right, and now we add our flour. One quarter cup of flour right to that mixture, okay? When I mix it thoroughly, it's going to create a bit of a mushroom paste. You want to cook out some of that starch flavor. If you don't, you may end up having a bit of starchy flavor in your finished soup. We're going to turn the flame down a little bit. It's been about a minute, all right? So from here, what we're going to do is take a ladle, and we're going to slowly add stock as we mix it together, creating a really thick paste. Ultimately, we'll add the remainder of the stock and it will create a wonderful uh, mushroom soup with really nice body to it. So start out with just about a ladle of your chicken stock. 
the pot. Okay, go ahead and cook that together. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up with mushroom gravy, basically. All right, it's going to be nice and thick. Go ahead and add an additional little bit of label of stock. Okay, this is going to help you incorporate it all together instead of adding it all at once. Just keep stirring away. And now go ahead and add the rest of the stock to the pot. You're going to turn the flame back up to about a medium to a medium high. And you're going to continue to stir and stir and stir. To activate the roux, you're going to need to have it come up to a boil. Otherwise, the roux will not activate. All right, but be careful. You don't want to burn anything in there at the same time. So just keep stirring. Okay, it's come back to a boil. Now, we're going to stir it continuously for another 60 seconds while it is boiling. All right. Again, this is going to finish cooking that flavor out. It's going to activate the roux and it's going to cause our velouté or mushroom velouté to become a bit thicker. It'll have more body. And ultimately what you're looking for, will it coat the back of a spoon? Okay, in there, we're going to go ahead into that mixture. Go ahead and add that teaspoon of paprika. Go ahead and add your chopped dill. Okay, and stir, and stir that in a little bit. Okay. Now, we haven't seasoned this yet. We're going to save that for last. What we're going to do now is take that to a little different place. Go ahead and pull that off the stove. What we're going to do here is, now, I know I kind of committed to doing everything without mechanical devices, but if you happen to have an immersion blender, this is the, the time you want to use it, all right? Go ahead and put it in the pot. We're going to blend it all together. I like those little chunks of mushrooms uh, throughout added to the body. Um, ultimately, we are going to add more sliced mushrooms to it, so you'll have those nice mushrooms in there as well. But let's just mix it all up real good. Yes, you can use a Vitamix or a food processor. However, be careful. You want to cover that thing really well. Don't fill it up all the way because it will basically it'll explode on you uh, when you hit the play button. All right, so be careful not to uh, you know make a mess or burn yourself. Okay, it's all blended up. Let's put it back on the stove top. I'm going to turn this on about just about a medium heat. All right. At this point, go ahead and add the rest of your mushrooms. Okay. As I mentioned before, it's always good to kind of season last. Let's see what sort of natural flavor comes out before we add any salt to it. All right. So we may need just a little. We may need none, or we may need an extra. All right. So let's just kind of taste it and decide what you need from there. Go ahead and give that a taste. See what we need still. All right, I think it still needs a little bit of salt. So let's add a little Chef Daddy to it. All right, stir it all together. And we'll check it out again. Mm. It's absolutely wonderful. All right, while we cook our mushrooms down a little bit, let's talk about this for a second. This is just a general idea. Make this soup your own, all right? If you want to make a cream of cauliflower, or a cream of asparagus, or something like that, or cream of onion, that is your prerogative. I just wanted to give you the basis, the concept of making a uh, general uh, velouté, getting the most flavor out of it, and making it your own. In our case, we're making the cream of mushroom soup. This is a done deal, all right? So grab your ladle. And as you likely noticed, we did save a little bit of that dill. Here's why. Let's garnish this up a little bit and make it look, make it look nice. About a little bit of paprika on the top. And there you go. Now, we're making cream and mushroom soup at home during a global pandemic.